Hello there. So, since my last adrenaline guide, a lot of things have changed and I would like to make some new changes to my guide. So, starting back at home, you'll see I have the games that I told you guys to remove last time. Um, there's a reason for this, I'll get to it later. So let's just go to gaming, games, again, I'll get to this later. Graphics. Okay, I did say turn off anti-lag, but now I'm thinking, um, well, okay, it's basically the equivalent of NVIDIA's low latency reflex. It, re it deletes that render queue, so again, it works best in uncapped FPS scenarios, but it really works well to reduce input lag in GPU heavy scenarios. Uh, radiant boost. I wouldn't use this unless you're playing on like 4K or I don't know 1440p and you have a lot of like mouse movement mouse inputs so like let's say you're going on B site on ascent and then you're getting pop flash four times I mean yeah I guess and your FPS is going like 20 maybe that's an issue and you want to enable this it basically downscales that image according to mouse input so the more like shaky or the more movement from your mouse the it'll downscale the image to keep those frames up don't use range show do not use that don't use sharpening don't use enhanced sync i would always put uh this is basically v-sync just put it always off you never want to use v-sync period all right there's no exception never v-sync uh, turn this off, uh, put on multi-sampling, same thing as last time, standard, disable everything. So the display, um, please turn on FreeSync, uh, especially if you have FreeSync Premium, because the range of FreeSync Premium, I believe, is 120 hertz to about 300 hertz. So it basically, what FreeSync does, if you guys don't know, I already made a video on it, but it basically, um, when your frames drop below your monitor's refresh rate, it compensates by matching that refresh rate to the frame rate. Now you guys are gonna say, oh, that gives us input lag, blah, 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 blah. Compared to V-Sync, it's nothing. It's negligible, right? For a smoother image, this, it, it's everything. Even for competitive shooters, turn on FreeSync Premium, all right? Unless you're like, you have a godlike PC and you can pump out like 500 frames on everything, like your frames are never gonna drop below 240 hertz or 165 hertz or 144 hertz, whatever it is, then you don't need to turn it on. But you know, when I'm playing other games like Squad, my FPS never reaches above 100 even, so I need this on for a smooth image, right? No screen tearing whatsoever. So this is off. I already explained why it's center. Keep it on center. Uh, these are my custom colors. If you guys want to copy that, I already made a video on it too. It's for Tarkov, basically. Uh, I don't know what this is. Definitely doesn't mean anything. And that is not what I get by an average. I get around 250, 260 average. I do not get that. That is completely wrong. It's skewed. This, uh, I wouldn't tinker with all this unless you plan to live stream or record. It's pretty self explanatory. Performance, term metrics, all this off. And I would, like someone pointed out, uh, we want to have sampling intervals on the maximum because that takes intervals every five seconds opposed to every other value less than five, which is going to be faster or more often. For tuning, all right. So here, again, don't mess with any of this. Uh, resizable bar, you guys might be wondering why I have this enabled despite my system being uh, I can show you guys despite my system having an Intel CPU and Radeon GPU so most of you guys might think resizable bars smart access memory is only available to AMD exclusive systems it's not anymore it doesn't even say SAM here uh, it's because it's in the BIOS so if you guys I mean it's all over YouTube it's going to BIOS, it's just called Resizable Bar Support. Turn it on, you'll have it on here. 
make sure you have this on. It's not going to make a huge difference, but you might as well have it on, right? It's not going to decrease your performance or anything. Maybe if it does, just a little. For fan tuning, make sure you turn on zero RPM, keeping your GPU very chilly. I uh, put this at 80, 80 plus, 83. Advanced controls, it's just for the fan cares, you want to mess with them. Now, for why I had these have these games over here, right, I did tell you guys to remove this last time. And yes, I still will, but it's just for the past few weeks, I've been thinking about, you know, since I do have a 6800 XT for my i7 12700 k there is kind of a bottleneck. I, I wouldn't even call it a bottleneck, right? But I don't know. I feel like my GPU is just not working to its maximum potential in many of the games I play. So I thought it'd be a good idea to, you can add a game, you can add a game profile, you, gotta, you can't search, like you can't just type in the name unless you have them added already. You want to press the plus and then go through all your stuff to find that shipping file or exe file now let's say we added Valorant, right um all right a better example is fortnite we know it already has performance mode issues so and we know that happens because the gpu just doesn't boost at all when we're in performance mode so my thought was that why don't we turn on gpu tuning here turn on advanced control and put that minimum frequency all the way up right so it'll never boost below that uh, but then when you do this, it automatically adds the game here. So that's why I didn't I didn't add these games for anything any other purpose just for this and If you guys are wondering no, it doesn't fix the issue again as I said before because It doesn't lock it at 1 1863 megahertz even if I set it there right now Of course, it's not because the program isn't running even if I run Fortnite, which I'm not gonna do but if I do it's not gonna constantly boost to 1863 at least not in my experience it'll be 1863 for like i don't know 30 seconds i'm gonna go back down to like 300 500 so it doesn't really work that's why i'm planning on getting rid of these but i don't know for now i'll just i'll have to keep saying and for power limit here i have it at two percent but what this means is basically it's a hundred percent plus or minus this value. So if this is going to negative five and negative six, that's a hundred minus six, that means ninety-four percent. So that means your GPU will consume ninety-four percent of whatever it can ever consume of the wattage, right? So if we turn this up to zero, that means the GPU will consume like the maximum it'll consume is what uh, you know how many cables in the PSU it has 300 something watts who knows let's say 360 now if we turn this up to I don't know 2% that's like 370 I'm not too sure but you know you got what I mean it just keeps going up so if you slide this all the way over here your GPU will be able to consume how much ever power it wants in the whole entire world you know I wouldn't do that because that's only for overclocking so for me, I just keep it at two, just in case, because you know, just in case I need a little extra power, you'll have it. Go to settings. Uh, pretty self-explanatory here. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. Yeah. All right. So that's basically it. I just wanted to, yeah, just make some changes to what I've said before, especially this free thing, free sync thing. There's a mistake telling us to turn this off. Yes, it does cause input lag. Yes, it will. Any variable refresh rate will. But the input lag is so negligible. It does not matter. I would, I don't know about you, but I would much rather have that little, 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 unnoticeable. It's, we can't even tell. It's just a placebo if we do somehow notice it. All right? It's very, very little. We will, the human, uh, I will never notice such a thing it's not possible and uh i would much i would much rather have that negligible input lag over a very choppy and tearing image all right i want a smooth image it looks great 
I don't even feel an input lag. Why not? Right. So there you go.